172nd Contact Sunday, July 4, 1982, 11.03 am. Quetzal says my coming today is for the purpose of obtaining the interim results which I already announced to you at the interruption of the contacts. Since then, it has been a little more than three months, thus, a time that allows us to sum things up, especially after your meeting last night, which demanded all admiration from us. With this meeting, it has been proven lately, despite all adversities and compulsory measures, that a wide-scale recognition of duty has minted itself in the individual group members even better and more consciously than the devotion to duty itself. This causes us to relax our regulations in the sense that we can make allowances for mistakes that are committed even if they aren't fully justifiable in relation to our regulations. The efforts of the larger number of group members entitle us to act in this way and allow for relaxation, even if there are still some assumptions which aim at the fact that we are always forgiving and would once again relent. But this is an evil fallacy of those who think this way because we stick to our arrangements and deviate from them in no way, even if we now allow legitimate relaxations. If we now allow for and grant these relaxations, it is only because these are for the purpose that we think that as a result of all the efforts of most group members in the last few weeks, the time has now come to place freely the recognition of duty and devotion to duty back into the hands of the group members as this was originally our doing and intent, with which the entire decision lies with the individual group members again, and this is the case even if some haven't yet fully found the necessary path, but they can find and take this path, nevertheless, if they follow the good example. And if we now make this decision, to which you have contributed much through the strict implementation of the measures imposed by us then this decision results from the fact that by following the compulsory instructions, conditions have appeared in the sense, thoughts, and actions of most individual group members, which now demand that the responsibility for and the compliance with what is required will again be warned by every single group member, without logical force and according to a pure and free assessment, even if some are not yet completely clear about their own honesty, recognition of duty, devotion to duty, and about the whole importance and scope of the mission as well as the tremendous importance of the fact that this group truly has to be an elite and that this is of worldwide necessity for the sustaining of life. So now, after everything and especially after the findings of last night, we have to put the entire fate of the individuals and of the whole group back into their own free hands for the remainder of the six-month period, in order to make our decision in this way after the set deadline because it can only be correct if it can be made after an independent and free action of the group members. However, it is necessary that various group members become more attentive in the area of manual work and that they commit far fewer blunders which affect the consciousness considerably. Billy says this is, indeed, a tough route because making a free decision about one's recognition of duty and one's devotion to duty is harder than following instructions. Quetzal says that is correct because the assessment of every single relevant fact lies with every individual. This could mean, like before, that negligence, individualism, revolutionaries, and carelessness will occur under the wrong view that we would overlook these another time. But any group member who thinks in this way is mistaken because we do not diminish in our conditions. This means that without fail, a definite exclusion from the community and from the group has to occur if one acts against our rules and regulations. Billy says with the exclusion from the community, you probably mean that along with an exclusion from the core group, there also has to be an exclusion from the center itself? Quetzal says yes. That is correct, that is exactly what was just explained by my words. In the future, anyone who is excluded from the core group, at least by the 4th of October, is also deprived of the right to remain further in the center or to appear in this way through a visit. This alone ensures that only core group members will exist, who are suited for the elite task and who form themselves to this usefulness. But whoever cannot do this is worthless for the task and must be removed as chaff from the grain. 
whoever doesn't submit within the given deadline and who continues to walk falsely according to his own, wrong free will and who only lives according to his emotions and according to other inhuman perversions, is of no value as an elite member. You have to make this clear to all group members immediately, after which our determination then applies, that an immediate and irrevocable exclusion and a final removal from the center results if one violates the given provisions. We still want to be lenient in this regard, up to the time when you have made this determination clear to the group members. But after that, no more exceptions apply not in any relationship nor for any group member. Billy says so then, the time is only considered as given when I have trumpeted this bad news of the removal from the center. Quetzal says that is correct. We know very well how difficult this task is for you and that it is contrary to you to fulfill this. Nevertheless, there is no lenience given to you because for better or worse, you have to fulfill this. But concerning this, we give you a time frame and processing time up to the group meeting on August 7th, according to which you must then announce our arrangement no later than this date, wherewith it then also immediately enters into force. So in relation to this determination, from now until then, a related state of suspension applies, but after that, the provision enters into full force. For this reason, it should still apply during this suspension time that certain false actions in relation to devotion to duty and living together, etc. be considered leniently and also be treated so. This is so arranged by us because we have observed your implementation policy of our provisions very well and have ascertained that you now carry these out unusually hard and unfalteringly and without exceptions and that you are keen that these are kept. You act effectively and impartially, without regard to losses even in your own family, about which I must admit that I would have difficulties in your place because it is still the case with us that in such matters, we are tempted to make certain fine distinctions when it concerns our closest family members or when it concerns friends who must be censured or be reprimanded by any measure. We overcome these selfish emotions very well, but they often cause us difficulties. But unlike us, you are entirely free of such selfish preferences in such concerns, while we have not yet gotten over such. However, this is likely due to the fact that you live on another world with a much harder mission and with a different type of people than is the case with us. If we bring your mission on earth in confrontation with our own, then we realize that here, you have to impose entirely different standards than is the case with us. But we first recognized this recently and only after the time when you opened your thought blockade to us, as we demanded you. So we could then thoroughly analyze you once again, whereby a lot became clear to us and we also realized that at other times, you were not mistaken about those things of which we accused you, in regards to the failure of performing your duties along with not implementing our regulations and not enforcing them with all members in the group. It issued forth from this that we were wrong in the judgment of your actions, as you were also wrong in the sense that you blocked your thoughts from us completely. This led to various misunderstandings between us, for which we are very sorry, and which led to a wrong judgment against you. Since we can now grasp your thoughts again, we can also see very clearly. Through your now audible thoughts, we can grasp what has remained hidden to us until now, because at that time, we mistakenly showed you the way in an unconscious form even as you were able to shield your thoughts against us, so to us no more time remained to analyze you truly and thoroughly, after you had received your new mission from us in 1975. Thus, your deepest convictions remained completely closed to us, while we had to be content with the superficial data and didn't know the truth of all that is deeply anchored within you. We only recognized this after you removed your blockade and gave us the opportunity to perform the necessary analysis at that time. But at that time, we didn't remember that you could and would block yourself from us, which is why we presumed to have enough time to be able to perform this necessary work in the course of time, wherein we felt deceived by your actions, which have caused us a lot of unnecessary trouble and also many misjudgments in many respects. 
but we now know the truth about you and about your deep commitment and willingness, as well as your awareness of duty regarding the fulfillment of the whole mission. We now also know about your reasons for your absolute modesty, which we could never understand in this way before, but which has now become clear to us. And last but not least, we also discovered the shocking fact that exists within you, that you are absolutely neutral towards even your closest and immediate family members and friends etc., and that you show them complete equality, a fact which knows no difference from those people who are classified into an external circle according to our This is a fact that embarrasses us, my friend because we are just on the verge of solving this problem of brotherly love and universal love, in which there only prevails a relevant form of absolute equality. Your earthly mission obviously allows you to find ways in your mind to obtain absolute, egalitarian brotherly love and universal love, which still remains closed to us, so I ask you, please, to speak with me about this at an appropriate time and by order of our spiritual leaders on error, and about other very important things, through which you can be helpful to us if you would agree to this. Billy says you certainly not in your right mind, my friend. I'm supposed to show you and your spiritual leaders away. You crazy. Quetzal says all my senses are in the right order, and moreover, you aren't to show us away, but we ask you to teach us in very important concerns. Billy says you completely crazy. I would straightly be a megular maniac if I would take such a crazy offer seriously. Quetzal says my words are extremely serious. I don't like to joke in this respect, brother. Billy says with your brother, you become damn solemn again, my son, nevertheless, I still cannot eat your words. No doubt, you have a treacherous test or a joke in stock, right? Quetzal says yet I told you that I do not like to joke about this. Billy says I'm moved you really mean this seriously? Quetzal says that is correct because at least with respect to the Afari mentioned, we and our intellectual leaders need your teachings and instructions. Billy says by your intellectual leaders, you probably mean spiritual leaders, right? Quetzal says that is correct. These are very wise men and women on our home planet, who teach and lead our people as leaders, as well as publicize the advice of the High Council. Billy says and I am to teach these. That's crazy. How could I, a simple earthworm and barbarian, even presume to consider such a move? Quetzal says because of your earthly body, you identify yourself too closely with the forms of the earth. You should remember more often that your spirit form is the oldest on earth, and moreover, it hasn't come from this planet, as we know in the meantime. This should also be a reason for you that you will very likely be in a position to instruct us and our leaders. Thus, you also have to consider that your spirit form is at least as old as ours and also that there are only a few leaders of our home planet who are alive with spirit forms that are a little older than yours. Nevertheless, the difference is so small that it cannot come into play. Furthermore, you also have to consider that their annual spirit forms were created far away from the earth in the same remote space, and began to learn and to grasp together and that your spirit form is absolutely equal and even superior in certain respects, as has been proven at other times and once again. Even though you are a stranger on the planet Earth and try to cover this with your forced identification with the Earth forms, it has become very powerfully evident to us after your opening of the blockade. And precisely because of your identification with the Earth forms and with all of the very many wants and negative concerns on the planet Earth, you have found means and ways of evolution that have hitherto remained foreign to us and that have also been unappreciated by us on our new home world, which is dominated by the purest peace. And precisely these means and ways, along with many other things, you should explain to us as well as instruct us in them and teach them to us. For this purpose, we occasionally want to bring you to error for some hours, where you should then give us your instructions directly. Of course, the group members of your present time will partially benefit from these instructions because we are willing to transmit these teachings to you as contact reports.
but the condition for this is that on October 4th, we give a positive assessment for the continued existence of the group and for the fulfillment of the mission. If it should arise that our assessment is negative, then our strange request to you would still be valid, nevertheless. Billy says you are completely damn serious about everything, I see that now. Well then, I would like to think about everything. But now you've done it, that for once, I actually think of something other than just my existence on earth, which actually causes me a lot of damn difficulties and which I just want to renounce only too often. Give me some time. Quetzal says we thought that you would like to have some time for reflecting upon this proposal. This is also the reason why we decided to give you time until the 4th of October, so you can make your own decision after thoroughly considering ours. Billy says that's fair, I think, but what should happen after the 4th of October if everything is to continue, I mean in relation to the fulfillment of the ordinal rules and statutes, etc.? Quetzal says if until the date of October 4th, it happens that we must break everything off, then everything becomes null and void anyway. But if it turns out that the decision will be one of a continued, calm existence, then at the end of the six-month period, the ordinal rules and statutes will no longer be so strictly insisted upon because then, each individual will properly decide for himself and act accordingly. Moreover, it is hoped for and bet on that this time if the decision should, in fact, be positive, which still can't be decided, unfortunately progress toward its true success will be made, and after the deadline, all regulations, etc. will only have to exist on paper, and all of the statutes and rules will no longer have to be consulted in order to create and maintain order. So such rules will only have to exist as a matter of form for the authorities, since it is legally necessary, but also for new group members, for their instruction. Billy says I also think that's fair, but whether it will work out? Quetzal says we fix our very last hopes on this. Billy says the fact that you can still hope in this way. Quetzal says this hope is even in you. We know this from your thoughts. Billy says you have rummaged through quite a lot. Quetzal says that is correct, but it was very well so. But now, back to other matters of which I still have to explain the following now, in regards to the recognition of and the compliance with one's duty, etc., if everything for every single group member is as it was at the beginning of the time in the centre, so in 1977 and 1978, then this doesn't mean that now, it can again be acted out and again be played in a crazy reality form. The much harder part of the six-month period starts with the recent release because now, the logical, free will will once again be of sole, paramount importance, as well as the necessary discipline, etc. Billy says this is damn hard, that's clear to me. Thus, a little help from you would be quite appropriate, I think. Quetzal says that's what we thought, too because in light of the new given conditions, we now won't stand back from giving a little help to all group members, thus, we will once again be helpful with impulses. Billy says and what about the measures that have been taken recently, such as with the special contributions of a financial form, whose purpose is to obtain certain orders at last? Quetzal says the arrangements concerning the monetary contributions that are to be paid continue to remain effective and at full extent because these are a good means to an end, regarding the achievement of and the compliance with the promotion of discipline. Moreover, in the matter of discipline, very special attention must be directed toward Ingrid and Ferdinand Fief and Berger because they both still tend to want to live and act in the center according to their own rules and rights, etc through which they disturb and endanger the harmony that is to be acquired. It should once more be said to them loud and clear that they, too, are no exception and have no special rights and that they are to follow after the order and the rules of the center without any separate treatment and special privileges being given to them. Furthermore, both of them are subject to the determinations prescribed by me until the 4th of October, as these presently exist. After that, if they get through this period satisfactorily, then they should be incorporated into the normal rules. But at this stage, 
such an incorporation still isn't to be expected because too many wrongdoings still occur with them both with Ingrid and with Ferdinand. This includes, once again, the often complained of manual work of Ferdinand in the center, the sense of which he often does not recognize and does not understand, and thus, he also criticizes the manner of the compilation and the execution of many of these works. All too often, he wants to carry out the various works and constructions, etc., according to his own sense, which unfortunately, would always only lead to deficiencies. He is correct in the execution of his work in and of itself, if he is given detailed instructions for a work or construction. But if he must act at his sole discretion, then his works and constructions, etc. become so flawed that damage inevitably arises from them. In this respect, Ferdinand is a man who can only work according to precise instructions, if true, steady work is to come from him. He could only seldom grasp the truth about the true sense of a work or the true stability of a construction, etc. Thus, he could only work according to precise directions, in which case it still must be ensured that he follows these directions carefully and doesn't make any changes at his sole discretion, which then lead to complaints and damage. He is not a man of independence but rather one of the many people who must be led and be instructed as well as be directed. This is also true for Ingrid, who is only too happy to show herself as independent, in order to conceal her actual lack of independence, as is the case with Ferdinand. I know that in this regard, you have already spoken with Ingrid and Ferdinand several times, about which I must tell you that you should no longer do that for the time being. First, I want to observe the further activities of the two for some time, in order to be able to make my determinations, before I can arrange that you once again put forth effort for them. This should still be so at least until the beginning of August, after which you should then use your time again for Ingrid. Therefore, you should have a talk with her because she is the leading force in her relationship with Ferdinand, while he is just going along with her but it must still be mentioned that Ingrid has committed a breach of trust against me, by informing Ferdinand of certain matters, about which I had arranged that she may not speak with him about this and that this knowledge has to remain with her alone. So in this regard, I order that you also talk with her on another occasion about this matter in the coming of the time, in order to make her aware of this evil violation. In addition, you will need to tell her that I must impose a test upon her through you some other time in relation to truth speaking and measures of secrecy, because if I arrange that secrecy must be preserved, then this arrangement possesses validity, and she also has to maintain the quietest silence toward her husband. But now, she has abused my trust and has acted contrary to my arrangements, which is why it must be demanded of her that she clears up certain things with Ferdinand in your presence and under your inspection, after which she then gets to hear additional things from me through you, about which she finally has to remain silent this time. Nevertheless, if she does not do this in such a way, and she speaks some other time to Ferdinand or to someone else about this, then a final and definite expulsion from the core group results for her for this renewed offense. It must still be explained that her offense against my trust in her secrecy was reinforced by the fact that she let her strong imagination prevail uncontrollably and spoke of alleged incidents that are not compatible with reality and which are to be assessed as only figments of her imagination. Ferdinand must also be cleared up about that by her. This places a demand on me for her breach of trust committed against me and you. Therefore, you will have to discuss the following with her in the month of August, if I give you the order for this. But now, you must realize that you have to avoid any discussion with Ingrid up to the time that is still to be mentioned by me. Billy says that's not too difficult. Them talking with her will already be the more difficult because this will again take many hours in each case. Quetzal says that will, unfortunately, be the case if the two don't pass by the offences against the rules and statutes, whereby they must be removed from the group. Actually, both of them should have already been excluded long ago because in too many respects, they have failed to fulfill my arrangements, 
by what means this even would have witnessed new, undetermined offspring, for which we had to intervene, in order to prevent a catastrophe that would have befallen this family, because through the folly of the two and through the instincts of a personality, the possibility for an existence in a body was given, which would have brought death, destruction, and annihilation on earth, especially in the family of Ingrid and Ferdinand as well as in the free community of interests. As you know, we were able to prevent this through an exchange process, thus, the worst of all evil was turned away. But furthermore, we can no longer watch such activities, so you are advised to proceed with all your initiative against the wrong actions of the two, as you lately do everywhere in accordance with our arrangements. And so, I am at the end of my remarks on this occasion. Farewell, my friend. Billy says until we meet again. It's enough for me today, too. Oh yes, wait, I have one more question on June 18th, Roberto Calvi, the head of Italy's largest private bank, was discovered in London, hanging from a bridge. Did he commit suicide, do you know anything about this? Quetzal says I am oriented over it. The man did not commit suicide, but he was strangled and this was in connection with a very intricate matter in which the Vatican and the secret services and also intelligence aid agencies played important roles. But about this, I want to tell you the following in confidence, which you must keep to yourself for the next twenty years. Billy says thank you for your trust. Then I now have nothing more. Farewell. Quetzal says until we meet again. The End